we uh, I, I end up relocating end up coming here February February uh, 2018 and then you, you got pregnant a couple months later a couple weeks later or something like that I think I think I got pregnant that same night. <laughs> that same night. Yeah, it didn't take that long. It huh? didn't take. Long. Yeah. I had we had baby Caleb in October. October. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. you want to tell the tell well, yeah. I guess it's a two-part story, I guess, of how uh you show love with the first pregnancy, but then the second one you like just threw the pregnancy stick out. <laughs> you just took the pregnancy. I'm pregnant again. <laughs> It was bad. It was a lot because I just had a baby. Yeah, yeah. You was just having babies. So with, yeah. 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 Was... So with Caleb, you know, I made sure I wrote him a nice note and told him this, you know, made a big announcement of how he's going to be a new dad. And it was so exciting. We'll have to show you the video. I have it somewhere. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah that's true. I have to show you the video. That's and then funny. with Joshua, Caleb might have been six months old at the time. So, when I realized I was pregnant, I was just, I was upset. I was upset. I did not want to be pregnant. I just, just started losing the baby weight. <laughs> like I was just getting off postpartum. I was dealing with that. Um, postpartum depression is real. Shout out yeah. to the mommies out there who deal with it. If you are dealing with it, get some help, get counseling. You know, you need a pill to help you get through it. I understand mama. It is tough out here. You have to do what you have to do to feel better, you know. Postpartum uh, is real, and, and I think people don't talk about it enough. They do not. Uh, even from, and I think you can't even get to that place if you just kind of got baby mama, baby daddy kind of thing, because you're all trying to figure out what we're going to do with this baby, let alone postpartum, if he ain't in the picture, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So that's, I, it's so much stuff that goes into that, because mm -hmm. uh, as a man, you might not understand. You just like she tripping, mm -hmm. but you don't know what she's going through. You have no idea. I think we had our struggles. We had that. our struggles yeah, with that too. Heck yeah, you know, Sean, I didn't understand what I was going through. Mm -hmm. You know, you hadn't dealt with that before in fifteen some years. You know, a long time. I, I yeah. had yeah, that was, was different. It was a lot, and you know, thank God for counseling. Yep. You know, um, I found an amazing counselor. And she was able to help me through a lot of that process mm -hmm. um, at the time because it, it was a struggle. It was a real big struggle. Um, I, you know, I still battle with depression even to this day. Mm -hmm. um, it comes and goes. And so having the proper help that you need, you know, you know, get it if you need it because mm -hmm. being out here and just feeling down all the time and in the dumps all the time and not doing what you need to do to help make yourself be in a good place and let your levels be balanced mm -hmm. it's 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 a lot on you especially if you're a mama like me who's working full time and trying to take care of these babies you know on top of that our boys our two youngest are special needs mm -hmm. you know they're battling autism mm -hmm. and let me not call it a battle it's, this is their story, you know, they have autism and uh, we are trying to figure out how everything works in this neurodiverse community and how we can best help them and, you know, not only let them be able to live in this world normally or as functionally as best possible, mm -hmm. but also let the world, you know, know about our boys and how amazing that they are, how amazing neurodiverse you know, folks are. So it's uh, something we're still learning. We're trying to embark upon that journey. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So we have lots of stuff going on, yeah. and but it it can be hard and difficult. So um, it can make you a little sad and down having to deal with a lot of the things at one time. So shout out to the mommies who have kiddos with autism. They're amazing. They're amazing kiddos. They're tiring, but they're amazing kiddos. <laughs> So we get to, um, we're going on five years of marriage and now we're at a place where uh, we got, you know, a little experience under our belt, yeah, a, little a little bit, <laughs> you know, growing, growing in, in grace, yes, but we, we got some therapy uh, and I know that's almost like a buzzword today, like mm -hmm. the word toxic or uh, narcissist, like these, these common, you know, everybody's, you know, do the work, all these different things. Right. But the importance of therapy I think it helped us tremendously. 
Uh, I do think some people struggle with trying to find a therapist yes, or even understanding insurance and therapy because there's a lot of people that don't know how that works. Mm-hmm you know and every insurance is different. yeah every insurance is different yeah mm-hmm. so some people are like i will get therapy but it costs too much and then it's like if you you got to check with your insurance company to, to see how much your deductible yeah your also, deductible it can be pricey yeah but it can be beneficial depending on who you have yes um because i and this is another tip too i will say to single people how much if you're on a date with somebody ask them how much are they actually investing in relationships are they going to say a, a, a singles conference or are they buying books? Cause you know, put your money where your mouth is, right? You talk about, you want a relationship. You want to be married. Uh, did you buy Sean's course? Uh, did you buy books? Did you, Hey, I'm just saying, right. <laughs> hey, let's, let's be honest. Uh, and again, we're talking about therapy. Do you have a therapist? And I asked that question online the other day, would you date someone who's not in therapy or they don't see any need for it mm. you know that I think that's a a, a question that's worth discussing as well because when we first got together although I'm not against therapy I had never had it mm. myself before we had got together mm. I think I did I I got robbed at a hotel once and um I needed therapy after that because I, I had PTSD of course and so I think I did maybe three sessions mm. um and during those three sessions, it was the therapist was not the best. It was an older, you know, Caucasian man. And he just, uh, he talked most of the time about himself. And so it wasn't beneficial to me going to therapy. So after that, it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth about therapy. So it was very hard to go to therapy after that. Mm. Are you tired of dating the same person, just different faces? Are you tired of people wasting your time in this whole dating process? Do you desire to marry one day? I created this five-part video series entitled Dating Intentionally, Five Ways to Know They Are the One for You. You can get it now in the comments section below. You will see it is five, the number five, ways to know.podia.com. I created this five-part video series with you in mind. Now let's get back into today's podcast episode. But after Sean and I got together, when he first got out here, he told me, hey, I need to go, you know, I have to get into some type of counseling because, you know, it was a big change for him. Uh, Moving from everything he knows in Arizona, switching jobs, switching careers um, and coming here to Texas to be with me and to be submersed into my world. It was a big change change for him and I think um he told me straight out he's like I need to find therapy and at first he said he said it for about two weeks before I actually was like okay he's serious about this let me check in with my insurance and I got online and found um a couple of different options and you know he went through a couple of therapists before he found his you know diamond in the rough I guess you could say yeah shout out to her yeah I was rocking her for like two years yeah yeah Yeah, um I don't think he's found anybody like her since. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and therapy can be a challenge sometimes. And I just want to say too, to those who are watching, don't give up on therapy just yes. because you haven't found that yes. one person. Because yes. people be like, oh, wow, well, I've seen two therapists and that's why I don't like therapy. Mm-hmm. It's this self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm-hmm. It's like, you don't give up on eating steak because you went to a bad restaurant. You just go to another steak place because yeah. you want steak. But anyway. Yeah, I think... Uh... <sighs> you have to take that initiative to keep looking if even if the experience isn't as great with one therapist or maybe even three therapists you might have to go through five before you before you actually find what you were looking for but eventually it will um come and so he started therapy first by himself um and then when i got point by himself No, I think that's important. You're right. I think that's important. Do you yeah. want to expound on that a little bit? Yeah, as as- um, because I was at a place where I didn't feel like I needed it. I was in superwoman mode. I was just like, no, I'm going to, you know, I have things to do. I don't really have time to go to therapy. And I felt like I didn't need it. It wasn't until when I found after I was pregnant and I realized that I might have had a potential for postpartum depression is something that worried me. And I was like, I and I wasn't as, um, you know, you take pregnancy pictures and all this other kind of stuff and I realized I 
had no desire or will or want to do those things and I wasn't really excited and then they took away my food because I ended up having gestational diabetes and when you're pregnant all you want to do is eat and they took away my joy in life because I couldn't drink alcohol or margaritas or wine everything was taken from me as far as food so I was like this really is a terrible thing happening so <laughs> I struggled it's postpartum. They took away my food. <laughs> and I, and I hadn't even hit postpartum I was feeling depressed during the pregnancy so because I didn't have my food so ugh, people with gestational diabetes I feel you mama it's not fun having to check your blood sugar and take pills and it's just not fun um so it was during that that I realized I was like, okay, I needed to start some therapy too, because I felt myself shifting and getting sad and not, you know, feeling excited about life because I was like, this baby's taking everything from me, you know? And it's like, you don't want to not sound morbid or anything. It's just like, you didn't feel happy about the baby and you're a mom. So you're like, you're supposed to be happy about having a child. And so I felt guilty, you know, a lot. And so my therapist, she really helped me through that time. And I'm so glad I found her. Um, and I was lucky enough to find her on the first try. So oh, everybody yeah. does not have that experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so I found her on my first try of looking for a therapist. She was amazing. And I was with her for about three years before she ended up oh, yeah, yeah. really leaving me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I have a new therapist now. She's also amazing. She's helping me through the stuff I'm going through now, trying to find some homeostasis, as I call it, <laughs> in my life and trying to find some balance. Um, but uh, Sean and I ended up, when my daughter ended up living with us um, and moving from Arizona um, with her mom and living out here, we realized, because we were getting house counseling for her, and it's funny, I was looking for a counselor for her, and... Um, we ended up finding someone else and the lady called me back and she was like, are you still looking for counseling? I was like, no, not for her anymore, but for us, do you do marriage counseling? And she was like, yeah. And so we ended up starting marriage counseling about two years ago. Mm-hmm. She's also amazing. Yeah. We'll have to name drop later if they let us Yeah, uh, about yeah, all of our amazing counselors. Yeah. Uh, We've been blessed in that area for the most part. We so have, and she's saying. helped us through a lot yes. of past trauma that I realized I was bringing into our marriage. Um, one thing I will tell people is it's important to do individual counseling first. Mm-hmm. And this is our experience mm-hmm. um, because it gave us a place to where we were both open to hearing the things that we needed to fix. Mm-hmm. Cause sometimes I counselor, she gets on our butt. She was like, now Clarissa, yeah, you she, know. And I was yeah, like, she was going hard. <laughs> <laughs> It is difficult to hear when you're you're not being your best and having someone call you out. And then also, I would also say getting someone who doesn't know either one of you guys. That's huge. Yeah. Because there is no bias because she's or he he or she is coming from a you know place of I don't know either one of you guys. This is my observation for what I'm hearing right now Mm -hmm. um so I'm glad it was somebody we both didn't know we were coming with a fresh clean slate on both ends Mm -hmm. and she has really done amazing things on helping us communicate with each other and um effectively communicating effective communication that's very important and um I am so (laughs) glad that uh, we were able to do that so I would definitely recommend premarital counseling for sure uh doing that that's something we did not do that's something i wish that we had done um was uh, because we thought oh we know everything because we talk every day we we knew nothing yeah okay and so once we got married and we and when we started um counseling with each other it really just helped us a lot and so Mm -hmm. i would definitely recommend doing premarital counseling counseling during your marriage but also doing individual counseling so that you know you're able to take some constructive criticism um mm-hmm. because when you're already working on yourself you'll be able to really hear what your partner has to say because you know they see everything they're your mirror <laughs> yes right. marriage is a mirror yes they see everything all the good bad and the ugly mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah 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 that's important yeah marriage is a mirror um I always joke around with single people. I'm like, look, if you don't, if you don't want to look in the mirror, just stay single. Because if you get married, it's gonna be in your face. They gonna, your spouse is gonna be in your face, you know. And, and your, and your spouse is not the ops. I know you probably no. think like, oh, yes. they, you know, they. Look, if you with somebody and you don't think they have your best interest, then you're probably with the wrong person. Amen. 
that that'll preach. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then. <laughs> yeah, you probably <laughs> with the wrong person if you feel like they're the ops. Because yeah. I know I struggle in that area, and I'm just like, oh, I have to remind myself that she does have my best interest. Yeah, like I have to I mean, remember that that yeah. she has my best interest. Same thing. Yeah, and once I realized that, I'm like, okay, I you know, all right, I know she's just trying to look out for me, even if it sucks or if it hurts okay, I'm just going to, okay. And I had to remind myself, you know, but, and again, that comes with therapy that comes with dealing with past traumas, stuff that yes. you like, we, yes. we, we can be so messed up as a community, especially for the African-American community that we think the stuff that we've been through is not traumatic. We're like, mm-hmm. well, that's just, that just happened. Yeah, that's just the way we grew yes, up. We do. Yeah. Nah. We have normalized trauma. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. don't. Yeah. And you start talking about all the stories and stuff and the things that you've been through and mm-hmm. Man, that's mm-hmm. yeah, it's not normal. So not, get get the necessary. Trauma's not normal. Yeah. Yeah, right. Get right. the necessary therapy because yes. it's gonna help you one day. Cause somebody I believe a lot of marriages could do better if you yes. get the necessary therapy sure. and invest, invest in, in your marriage, marriage and in your relationship. Then, yes. You know, yes. That, that that's even makeup. You invest in your marriage, invest in, in invest in looking as fine as, as she does. I try. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, do that. Spend that time. But we'll talk about some other stuff later.